of people think it's all roses, you got a bunch of talent, you can just go make easy money, but it's not that way. You're always expected to be the best, you're always expected to be the best when you've got hundreds and hundreds of other people trying to do the same thing as you and they're working just as hard, if not harder. You always have to find ways to push yourself to go faster, to be better, to be smarter. Three hours a day at the gym, then you head to the track and you're testing, you're trying different things, trying to make the machine better, trying to make yourself better a little bit faster. A lot of travel, you're exhausted. It's a full-time job, by all means, and then some. I mean, I'm a business owner now, and I know the hours that I put into the business, and uh, a, lot, a lot of times it feels chill compared to what I used to do, for sure. Being a professional snowcross racer is, yeah, getting paid to race snowmobiles. The pinnacle of my career uh, was, was the Blair Morgan racing days, like 2004, five, and six. Um, me, Blair, uh, Carl Kuster, the three of us were just winning everything. You know, we were flowing everywhere, just tons of crazy after parties. Uh, it was, it was, yeah, a crazy time. And I think that was all a part of, um, part of the, the, the fall down of, of my career, kind of in the middle of it was, uh, everything was, was just was so good. It was too good to be true. In 2010, I signed uh, with Warner Racing. Ended up doing a lot of damage to my scaphoid bone in my wrist. I went and seen a surgeon, and he said that they, they really needed to do surgery on it, and uh, called Warner and told him I wouldn't be able to come back. At that time, I was 28 years old, so I was getting, kind of getting up there for, for snowcross. I mean, not a lot of guys ride past their 30s um, or race competitively. Started looking around at other things to do. My first two years of retirement, I, uh, I didn't even really enjoy riding. I don't know why, uh, it was kind of weird. Just felt like, you know what, I retired, that's, that's kind of it. There's no, no real point in staying in shape and riding. I'm not even really having that much fun. Um, and that, that, it was like that for a couple of years. I got pretty depressed about not racing anymore. I mean, it was a life that I lived for so many years. And uh, for the first year, year and a half, it, it really wasn't a big deal to me because I was excited. I was moving on to new chapters in my life. And then I guess all of a sudden I just really missed the, the pace of my old life, you know, uh, with racing. I mean, there's lots of, you know, adrenaline all the time. and. A lot of highs and lows, and, and you're, you get used to that. Signing autographs, and um, you know, kids are looking up to you. You're getting idolized. It's uh, it, it's such an amazing feeling, and then you end up actually almost taking it for granted a little bit. And then now, being retired, nobody nobody cares about who you are if you're any good at riding a snowmobile. That ends up um, being you know, a little bit of an eye-opener on reality. So I, you know, my wrist was healed and I started kind of fishing around a little bit to maybe go back into the industry and signed a deal with Yamaha in 2012 to go do some testing for them, uh, which I was super psyched about. And then when I got there, started doing testing, uh, they wanted me to do some racing. It was, it, it was a really tough uh, decision to make because I knew that physically I really wasn't there. But mentally I was so stoked to go back to what I was missing. So, so I did, I went and did a couple of races and they, they did not go well. Um, I mean, they actually went horribly. <laughs> it, was, it was good for me, really, the fact that I should not be <laughs> racing professionally anymore. And so it kind of put my mind at ease and made it a little bit easier to deal with the plateau of, of a regular job. And then I moved back.
back to Prince George, my hometown. I met my wife uh, as soon as I moved back, um, shortly after I had surgery on my wrist. Um, met Danny in 2011, and, and uh, we've been together ever since. Got married last year, and uh, have a little girl, Zoe. She's going to be three here in November. And uh, me and Danny have a great life. And uh, but it's, once I had Zoe, uh, everything changes. Just naturally, I think your body knows that hey, it's not just me anymore. You know, you you're you're raising a child and. This is your blood, you know. She's, uh, she's, yeah, just so amazing. I know every move that I make now, I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about my family. I'm thinking about Danny. I'm thinking about Zoe. Um, so, in, you know, growing in that sense, you know, the, all, all that old life of highs and lows, you know, means a lot less to a guy for sure. Danny knows she can tell. I, I can't even tell it to myself, but I, I you know I get cranky or or whatever it may be, and she'll just be like, doesn't matter. Tomorrow you're going out. You need to go get airtime. I <laughs> you're pissing me off, Steve. Go out and hit some jumps. Go have some fun <laughs> on your sled or on your bike. She she's awesome. She she knows me better than I know myself and sends me out when <laughs> when I need it. is really similar and very different. I feel like I'm on top of the world, being with the girl of my dreams, having my daughter, and being in my own with riding and just loving it and still contributing to the snowmobile and motocross community. I um, have a lot more in my life now and I appreciate way more. And I think at both ends of my life, I'm super happy. 